Well, it's been a while since I've done this. Hi, hello, how are you all? I hope you're all doing well. Today's pattern is a rather special one to me because I designed it in memory of my boy Cooper, who I unexpectedly had to say goodbye to a couple of weeks ago. See, we have a little border collie here. Before we get into the pattern here though, I want to give you guys a few quick updates just because I've been gone for a little while. If that's not something that interests you, fair enough, there will be a timestamp down in the description which you can use to jump straight to the pattern. So basically the last time I was on YouTube, well technically that wasn't even me, that was my sister because she put up my last video and the community post because my internet hadn't been fixed yet. But I had her mention in that community post she put up for me that my internet was likely to be fixed in the next couple of days and I was really looking forward to getting back into things, designing Amigurumi, making videos again. And the internet did actually get fixed, that happened. But instead of me getting back into things, the universe apparently had other ideas and the next few weeks were kind of a shit show, if I'm being honest. Pretty much everything that I thought could go wrong did go wrong and dealing with grief and stress and illness, um, I just wasn't in the right headspace to be making anything. So I just took a few weeks off, spent time with my family and waited until I was in a place where I could get back to doing what I love doing, which is this. In regards to a few specific patterns that I know some of you have been waiting on, off the top of my head I can think of the Bigfoot Squishmallow and the Reversible Snorlax. I am going to prioritise those, so hopefully they will be out in a few weeks. I also intend to continue on with the Pokemon Blanket Cow, but that is going to have its own separate update video in a few days, just because there's several things I want to go over in that, and it's not really the place here. So that will be out possibly Tuesday or Wednesday. And the final update, probably the least important, is that I've had a little bit of time, not very much, but a little bit to work on my sort of crochet craft space here. So this is not the final product. Hopefully I can get this looking nice. I've also managed to find a couple of new, well they're new for me, lights and if you notice my videos changing from week to week it's because I'm just trying out different settings, seeing what works best for me. I don't have the best technical knowledge but I am attempting to teach myself via YouTube tutorials so I'm hoping that will work out all right but there may just be a settling in period where I do some tweaking. And now to today's pattern. It is a Border Collie inspired doggo. And despite me making it in memory of Koopy, I didn't actually make it look like him. And the reason I did that is I wanted a more generic dog pattern so that anyone could crochet a dog or their dog, whatever they would like to make. Though this one is intended to be sort of a standard Border Collie. I'm actually making a Cooper, a crochet Cooper for myself, which will look like him. And it's going to be a little bit larger than this one. But this is something I designed only a few days after he passed away. So it may not be the best pattern, but it does mean quite a bit to me. So I hope you enjoy it. If you would like to make your own border collie or your own whatever breed of dog you like or have, grab your hooks and let's get started. To crochet a little doggo, you're going to need a 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, a needle, pins, some stuffing, a pair of 12 millimeter safety eyes, as well as eight ply yarn in colors of your choice. For this Border Collie inspired puppy, I'm going to be using black and white. The first piece that we're going to crochet here today is going to be the little strip that goes on the forehead. And I'm crocheting this piece before I crochet the head itself, because I want to ensure that the spacing between my eyes is right. You can do the head first and put the eyes in and space them apart. I think we space them a 
about eight stitches apart. But if I crochet this strip first, that means I don't accidentally put them too close. I can lay this piece on the head before I insert the safety eyes just to make sure that they're spaced far enough apart. So I'll set that down there. And we'll go on to crochet that little strip. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Starting in the second chain from the hook, we're going to do four single crochet back down along the chain. For row two, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and again work four single crochet back down along our row. For row three, begin by chaining one and turning your work. Then we're going to single crochet two together. Begin by going into the next stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull through. And at this point, you should have two loops on your hook. From here, we're going to go straight into the next stitch. You're going to yarn over again and pull through once more. And at this point, you should have three loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over for a final time and pull through all three loops. After that single crochet two together, we're just going to do two single crochet. One and two. And now we should have three stitches in our row. One, two, three. Rows four through to nine are going to be chain one, turn your work, and three single crochet. And that's the last row. We're going to leave a fairly long tail for sewing. And then we can set that aside and crochet the head. We're going to start off the head in white and round one is six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases and an increase is two single crochet in the same stitch. I'm going to put my first single crochet go back into the same stitch and do a second and that is an increase. You're going to repeat this five more times for six increases in total. At the end of round two we should now have 12 stitches in our round and both rounds three and four are 12 single crochet or you can do as I'm going to do and just do 24 single crochet consecutively. Round five is one single crochet and then one increase in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat this six times. One single crochet, one increase, and keep doing that all the way around. Rounds six and seven are each 18 single crochet. I've just done stitch number 17 of round seven, and I'm going to do stitch 18 next, but on this one, we're going to change color to black. To do that, you're going to go into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, so you have two loops on your hook. But instead of finishing the stitch in white, as we would normally do, instead bring in your black, or whatever color you're going to be changing to. You're going to line this color up behind the head of your hook, then you're going to yarn over in the new color and pull through the two loops. So we're finished in the black. 
and I'm just going to cut the white because we don't need that at the moment. We're going to continue on with round eight and round eight begins with six single crochet and I'm also going to be working over these two tail ends just to secure them. After that sixth single crochet, we're then going to do six increases in a row. First increase, second increase, and sixth increase. After those increases, we're going to do six more single crochet. Both rounds nine and 10 are 24 single crochet. Round 11 begins with six single crochet. Then after that, you're going to repeat one single crochet, one increase six times, and then finish the round with six more single crochet. After round 11, we should now have 30 stitches in our round and rounds 12 through to 15 are each going to be 30 single crochet. Round 16 is three single crochet and a decrease repeated six times. We're going to begin with the first lot of three single crochet and three and then we're going to do an invisible decrease to crochet that you're going to go under the front loops of the next two stitches and i know it's very hard to see in the black but the front loop is the part of the stitch that's closest to you so the part on the outside here you're going to go under the first front loop then straight under the second front loop yarn over pull through both of the front loops and this will leave you with two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over again and pull through both of those loops. That's our first invisible decrease done. We're going to repeat that pattern of three single crochet, one decrease, five more times. After round 16, we're going to insert the safety eyes. So I'm just going to secure my end and then you're going to position the head correctly. So the more prominent part here, where it curves upwards, that's the top of the head. So we're going to place the eyes on either side of the head here. We're going to situate them between rounds 10 and 11. If you start at round one, you can just count your way out. One, two, three, four. 10, 11, so this is 10 and 11 here. And we're going to pop them eight, eight stitches apart. So if I pick a stitch, hang on, I just forgot which row I was working with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, okay, this one here. So I've picked this stitch, which is roughly in the middle, and I'm going to count out four stitches from that. Three, four, I'm going to place my first eye there. And then my second eye, I'm going to place eight stitches away. So if I count eight stitches back from this eye, six, seven, eight, nine. So in the ninth, I'm going to place the second eye, which gives me eight stitches in between. And then before I put the, that's the nose. <laughs> that is not an eye. Okay, a little Picasso dog. Now that both eyes are in, I'm not going to put the backs on just yet. Instead, I'm going to bring in the forehead patch that we crocheted earlier. 
and I'm going to place that on and just see if my eyes still look okay. So I'm going to place that there. The narrower end, the end where we cut the tail, that goes at the top. The wider end lines up with the muzzle here. So I'm going to place that there. And I think my eyes may actually be able to come in one stitch each. So I'll try that. And I think that's about right. So I've gone with seven stitches between my eyes. And that's why we did that bit first, because it can be pretty helpful. When your eyes are in position, we're just going to put the backs on. And then while I'm here, I'm also going to insert this nose. I found a whole little box of these noses the other day. I have no memory of buying them or getting them from anyone. No idea where they came from, so I'm just going to use them up. So I'm going to place that in the center there. If you have a safety nose, you can insert it at this point too, but if you don't, you can just add a nose with some yarn later on. Once those are all in, we're going to continue on with round 17, which is two single crochet, one decrease repeated six times. And then after round 17, it is stuffing time. So I'm going to secure my end again and grab my stuffing. Then when all the stuffing's been added, we're going to continue on with round 18, which is one single crochet, one decrease repeated six times. And then lastly, round 19 is just six decreases. Snip the yarn and then we're just going to hide this tail end. To do that, you want to grab your needle and just thread the end through that. And then we're going to go under the front loops of the last six stitches. Start behind the front loop, push your needle under it and then forward towards you and repeat this for all six stitches. And six, then pull on that yarn firmly and the hole will close up. Don't know how well you can see that because of the black yarn, but the hole will close. You're going to insert your needle straight back into the center of the last round and then just weave the tail end in through the body, which will secure it and stop it from coming undone. Well, that'll do. And then we're just going to snip off the excess yarn. And that is our head finished. Next up, we're going to make the ears and I'll be making my ears in black but you, the color you use is going to be determined by what kind of doggo that you're making. So we're going to begin by putting four single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is one single crochet, one increase repeated twice. Round three is two single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Round four is three single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Round five is just 10 single crochet.
And then round six, the final round of the ear is four single crochet, one increase repeated twice. And then just leave a tail for sewing and you're done. The next pieces that we're going to crochet are all the leg pieces. The front leg is just one piece and we're going to do that first, but the back legs are made up of two pieces. We have a thigh piece and a foot piece. So we'll be doing those after the front leg. To begin the front leg, we're going to make a magic circle and we're going to begin by doing three single crochet. And three, and then we're going to follow this up with three half double crochet. To make a double crochet, yarn over first, go into the magic circle, yarn over and pull through and we will have three loops on our hook at this point. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's one, again we're going to yarn over first, go into the magic circle, yarn over and pull through. Three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And we're going to do one more half double crochet. That's round one done. Round two is three increases. And the third increase. And then we're going to do three half double crochet increases. That means we're just putting two half double crochet in the one stitch. Same as we do a normal increase, we're just replacing the single crochets with half double crochets. Then both rounds three and four are 12 single crochet, or we can just do 24 single crochet consecutively. Round five begins with six single crochet, and then we're going to do three decreases in a row. After round five, I'm just going to add a little bit of stuffing to the foot. To keep the bottom of the foot nice and flat, press that firmly down on a flat surface. And then you're just going to grab a little bit of stuffing. And insert that in while the foot stays pressed flat. And I'm only going to be adding stuffing to the foot. I'm not going to add stuffing to the leg part, but if you would like to do that, what I would recommend you do is stop every couple of rows and add stuffing because we're going to be working with a very narrow space. It can be more difficult to add all the stuffing at the end. So I would recommend you do that as you go. When the stuffing is in the foot, we're going to continue on with round six, which is three single crochet followed by three decreases in a row. And then rounds seven all the way through to 13 are each going to be six single crochet. Like I mentioned before, if you want to add stuffing to the leg, you're going to have to do that as you crochet. Leave a tail of yarn so we can sew that onto the body later, and then we're going to crochet the back leg pieces. The first piece of the back legs that we're going to crochet is the foot part. And for that, you're going to begin by putting six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is two single crochet, one increase repeated twice. And then rounds three through to six are each eight single crochet. Thank you. 
will need a tail to sew that on as well and then we're going to make the thigh piece of the back leg which we're going to do in black. To begin the thigh piece we're again going to be putting the six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. And then finally, round four is just 18 single crochet. Tail and done. We're going to start the tail in white and round one is six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is one single crochet, one increase repeated three times. Round three is just nine single crochet. Round four is two single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Round five is 12 single crochet and at the end of the round we're going to change colour to black. So on my 12th single crochet of round five I'm going to change to my black yarn. Rounds six through to 11 are also 12 single crochet, but obviously we'll be working in the black yarn now. When round 11's finished, we're just going to begin adding some stuffing to the tail. And the tail doesn't really need a whole heap of stuffing, so you can just keep that fairly light. And then we'll continue on with round 12, which is four single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. Round 13 is 10 single crochet. Round 14 is three single crochet and a decrease repeated twice. And then lastly, round 15 is just eight single crochet. Go ahead and add just a little bit more stuffing to that. And then the tail is finished. The final piece that we're going to be crocheting is the body. Now with the body we're going to be using two colours and I would recommend you have both of those handy because we're going to be doing frequent colour changes. We're going to begin in the black and like with practically everything else we're going to start with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. It's in round three where we're going to bring in our white yarn. We're going to begin in the black though, and we're going to do one single crochet, one increase, and repeat that three times. Increase, one, and then increase. And then my third single crochet. 
And on my third increase, I'm going to change color. I'll go into the stitch, do the first single crochet of the increase, but on the second, I'm going back into the same stitch, yarning over, pulling through, two loops on my hook, I'm going to bring in my white yarn and finish in that. So it's the same color change technique that we've used in both the head and the tail. In the white, you're then going to do one single crochet, one increase, and repeat that three times as well. I am also working over the black yarn because I'm carrying that with me because I'm going to change back to black for the start of the next round. And I will need to change colour on my final increase and I'm doing that the same way I did before. Do the first single crochet of the increase, begin the second, but instead of finishing off in the white, we're going to finish off in the black. Round three begins with two single crochet, one increase repeated three times in the black. Changing colour on that third increase, drop the black, pick up the white. And again, I'm going to repeat two single crochet, one increase three times, but this time in the white. Round five also begins in black. We're going to do 12 single crochet in black, and then we're going to finish the round with 12 single crochet in white. Round six begins with black, and we're going to do three single crochet, one increase repeated three times in the black and then three single crochet, one increase repeated three times in the white. Round seven starts in black as well. We're going to do 15 single crochet in black, 13 single crochet in white, but then we're going to change back to black for the final two single crochet. Round eight is 17 single crochet in black, 11 single crochet in white, and then two single crochet in black. Round nine is 19 single crochet in black, 10 single crochet in white, and then one single crochet in black. Round 10 is 19 single crochet in black and then 11 single crochet in white. Round 11 is three single crochet, one decrease repeated four times in black and then three single crochet, one decrease repeated twice in the white. Because we need to change color on a decrease this time, I'm going to show you how to do that just because it is slightly different from the regular color change. So we're going to begin with our three single crochet, one decrease repeated four times in black. I'm up to my fourth repeat in the black. So I'm going to do my three single crochet, one, two and three and now I need to do my fourth decrease. I'm going to go under the next two front loops in my black. I'm going to yarn over with the black and pull through those front loops so I have two loops on my hook 
And it's at this point that I'm going to bring in the white yarn. Yarn over in the white and pull through those two black loops on my hook. And I'm just going to finish the round by doing the two, no, what is it? Three single crochet, one decrease repeated twice in the white. For round 12, we're actually going to be starting in white. We're going to do two single crochet in white, then 13 single crochet in black, and then to finish, nine single crochet in white. Round 13 also starts in white. This time we're going to begin with three single crochet. Then we're going to do 11 single crochet in black and then finally 10 single crochet in white. Round 14 also begins in white. We're going to do two single crochet, one decrease. Then we're going to switch to black and do two single crochet, one decrease repeated three times. We're going to swap back to the white and do two single crochet, one decrease repeated twice to finish off. Round 15 is two single crochet in white, 10 single crochet in black, and then six single crochet in white. Round 16 is one single crochet in white, 11 in black, and then six single crochet in white. Round 17 is going to be our final round of crochet. We're going to begin with one single crochet, one decrease in white. Then we're going to do one single crochet, one decrease repeated three times in black. And then finally, we're going to do one single crochet, one decrease repeated twice in white. To finish off, we're just going to stuff the body piece and then after that we can go ahead and start putting our doggo together. Alright, it's assembly time. So first order of business is I'm going to grab out some pins. And then you're going to grab the body piece and the head piece and we're going to stick the body under the head like so towards the back. So if you position it something like this and we want the white part which is the underbelly to be facing forward and I'm going to get that centered with the nose here. And now that that's in position, I'm just going to sew these two pieces together. And then just weave your tail end in through the body to secure it when you're done. The next piece that I'm going to attach is the forehead strip here and the narrower end is the top so that's going to sit up here and the wider end is the bottom. You're going to align that wider end up with our colour change rounds here so you're going to sew it on between where you've changed from white to black and make sure it's centred in between the eyes. Then just pin that in place and sew that on as well.
Because I didn't weave in my little tail end from the slip knot from the forehead stripe piece, I'm just going to weave that in through the body, if I can get it threaded, to secure that as well. After that, we're going to attach the ears. And with the ears, you have a couple of options. You can sit them upright like so, or you can do what I'm going to do and have them facing downwards. So a couple of little floppy ears. It really just depends on what look you want for your little doggo. You're going to pin the ears in place on either side of the head. And then just have a look from the front, make sure they're symmetrical. I might just need to move this one up a little bit more. And then once they are, you can sew those on as well. After the ears, we're going to begin attaching the back legs. And we'll need all four pieces. We need the two thigh pieces as well as the two feet pieces. We're going to sit our doggo down on the tabletop or whatever flat surface you've got on hand. And this is going to be a bit difficult to see from this angle, so I'll demonstrate with my hand. So if my hand is the flat surface, we're going to sit our doggo on there. And then we're going to attach the thigh pieces to the sides. So as it's resting on the flat surface, how is this going to work? We're going to line the thigh pieces up on either side with that flat surface. So we're going to sit it like this and the other one will sit on this side like this. And we're also going to add just a tiny bit of stuffing to each of the thighs. You don't need very much. When you've got the thighs pinned in place, you just want to check that they're both aligned correctly. You want them sitting slightly back from the front of the dog because you're going to put the feet underneath there. You don't want them sitting too far forward. Once they are in position, we're going to sew those on first. Next, we're going to take the two feet pieces and we're going to place those directly under the thigh where the thigh meets the body. So this part here, you're just going to place those there facing forward. And with these, like the other pieces, pin them in place first, make any adjustments that you need to and then sew them on. Now that that's done, we're going to attach the front legs and we're just going to position the front legs wherever they reach as your dog is sitting on a flat surface. So if the flat surface again is my hand, I'm going to place that down. I'm just going to line the bottom of the paw up with that flat surface and sew it on there. And I also want to make sure to get them centered. Double check everything looks good and then sew those on. And then finally, all we have to do is pin and sew on the tail. We're just going to position that down towards the bottom of the body in between the two thigh pieces. And that is all the sewing we need to do. Our little doggo is finished. 
thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video it was actually a pretty tough one for me to get through it just kept hitting me what it was i was actually crocheting so thank you if you made it all the way through to the end consider subscribing if you haven't already and i will be back next week with a new video